Hello, No What I County. This is Mark Scherz. We're here at No What I Can uh, on our little podcast set, and we are joined today by Debbie Fink of the Historical Society and many other things. I know we're going way back. <laughs> I know people. Uh, and we're going to talk about not only the Smithsonian coming into town, but a little bit about the Historical Society and uh, a lot of that fun stuff that we got a little diamond in the rough that a lot of people don't know about, and we want to really share with people what No What I County has. So, Debbie... Whenever we get back from the intro, introduce yourself and we'll get started on the conversation. So we'll be right back. Our mission is to promote strategies and policies which ensure improved health for all citizens of Noata County. Okay, Debbie, the Smithsonian Institute, the Smithsonian, Mm -hmm. which is New York City, right? Uh, Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C., okay. Uh, Is coming to No Water, and we just got done doing a little promo video explaining more about that, and you can find that on Facebook and YouTube and all that kind of stuff. We'll be in the same place as the podcasts are, basically. Uh, But other than the who, what, where, when, and why, we got a little bit more time to talk about how the heck did the, the Smithsonian Institute choose us, find us, why No Water? And, and then tell us a little bit about, a little redundancy about what the, the Smithsonian is going to bring as far as the exhibits. Okay, well, um, about a year or so ago, um, we just kind of stumbled on um, through the Oklahoma Humanities Council, stumbled on a, a traveling exhibit that we could apply for. And it was through the Smithsonian, the Museum on Main Street program. And they send out these exhibits that are designed and built by the Smithsonian, and they send them all over the country. And this one in particular, they aimed to try to get them in smaller museums that might not have the opportunity. So We um, really appreciate the big guy, like remembering the little guy that's awesome I, <laughs> right, that, to me right. that's a huge concept that we really appreciate so that's really cool and what was interesting i actually met the uh, the lady from the smithsonian she came to our um, initial training and she was from arkansas so she knew she knew what it was like around here and she knew kind of what rural communities are up against and uh you know it is kind of hard to p- compete with the big guys mm-hmm. they have budgets they have Uh, you know, professional staff and, you know, so it's hard for us who is just a group of volunteers. Volunteer base, yeah. Nobody gets any pay. All the money, all the donations that we get, we use to keep the museum open. We don't pay for any of our exhibit material. It's all donated by the community. Uh, Anyone that wants to give us anything that we think of as is of interest to know what a county we find is it a place is it for. fair to think of the historical society as the communities? Yes, like it belongs to the people. Yeah, exactly. And I think that, in my mind, personal opinion, that creates a, an obligation by the community to support your local historical society because right. culture and history is so important. And sometimes we forget that. Right. Uh, you 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 always hear somebody don't forget where you came from, buddy. You know, somebody gets <laughs> flying too high and you go. Don't forget where you came from. I know that you're from, you know, whatever. Uh, but yeah, uh, history and culture are important, and we have a rich hitch- history and culture here, and uh, we need to support that, right? With our actions, and we need to make sure that you know future generations that it's that it subsists for a long time, because you know we may grow up and move away and then come back again. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people retire, they go back to their hometown. Absolutely. But, you know, their children, their grandchildren need to understand where they came from. And that's what we're trying to do is record that. I mean, things have changed drastically since my grandparents were alive. And, um, you know, we can go way back. And we're lucky in that we can go way back in our history uh, and see what life was like. And, you know, that's what the museum is trying to record and to keep for future generations. Yeah. Um, thoughtful, thoughtful people, uh, that will take the time. And even people that don't realize that they would be interested in something like that when they go, they're like, Oh my gosh, I did not realize this, 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 there's a lot of big stuff that no water used to do. No water used to be bigger than Bartlesville. Uh, had, there's just so much, I don't want to, you go find it out and figure (laughs) it out. have fun doing it. You don't need to listen to Marcus yours to tell you about it. But, uh, 
there's so much things that are different, but here's the other thing is so many things are the same. Uh, history will repeat itself if you don't learn right. from it. And we'll exactly. make the same stinking basic mistakes over and over if we don't learn from it. And uh, that's just another thing that's super powerful to me is because, you know, what mistakes have been made in the past and I'd rather learn from somebody else's. Right. So, uh, Smithsonian, mm -hmm. we've talked about uh, how it came about coming into town. And uh, say the dates again real quick as well. It you might pop that uh, flyer up, Trista, please. It, it starts December the 18th. That'll be our grand opening. We're going to have several. 2021, really... if you're watching oh, this yeah. five years in the future. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to have several uh, openings, uh, opening ceremony. We're going to have some activities uh, that'll be fun for kids, families to attend. In addition to the actual exhibit, then there'll be time for them to see the exhibit. The exhibit is, is designed to um, prompt discussion about where we've been, where we That's are fantastic. now, and where we're going in the future. And we hope that people will really come and really look at it seriously and think about it. You yeah. know? We've got some questions. We'd love to have people just jot down their thoughts and put oh, them in cool. a little box at the end of the exhibit. Very cool. We would like for them to evaluate it because we hope we can do stuff like this in the future as well. Absolutely. Well, I would think if you knew a lot about your community um, and were proud of your community, you might be that person go, or that kid or something. Don't spray paint on that wall. Right. You know, I, that was my great great grandfather's building that he had the shoe store in or something, you know, of that nature. Right. It, but in general, we tend to take care of things better whenever we realize there's valuable to it and it's not just. You know, oh, this old building's been here forever. Yeah, but that old building has history to right. it and, and uh, could be something in the future, too. We see a lot of, uh, literally right now, just uh, down the street, they're uh, putting a brand new facade on the Cowboy Charm building. Mm -hmm. And that could be a huge uh, benefit for the community. And I wanted to go down that road, too. You had said, uh, we want people to visit it. Not only people from No Water. This is Smithsonian. This could draw in people right. from... Uh, Bartlesville so, or Coffeeville, Venita, Owasso, and even further, which we're talking about history and culture is actually feeding into the economics. Right. So if it's here for six weeks, we could have people for six weeks coming from other communities into our community, buying coffee, uh, going to the depot, eating a burger, going to the Mexican restaurant and having a, a burrito, going to uh, our local businesses and feeding our economy. And then I just want to throw this in. The Beautification Committee is an absolute complement to the Historical Society because they're trying to preserve and beautify our beautiful historic downtown and other visual places along uh, 169 and Highway 60 going through town. And uh, so we've got a little bit of love on uh, Fox 23, even I literally this morning mm -hmm. uh, for the murals uh, mural calendar. And uh, so this might be a big opportunity to have an influx of people coming in and seeing what Noah is actually about. Right. Um, I'll be honest, and this is all on me for saying this. <laughs> We've had some negative press uh, in recent history, um, and we want to recognize that. We don't want to ignore it. Because that's history, right? Right. We got to acknowledge our, our mistakes that we've made in the past. And we've had some pretty significant, even racial issues. I'm working on a documentary right now that's talking about Ken Zacker. Right. And uh, our my aunt, your friend, uh, Vicki Cowan, is in that. And we literally filmed that in the Historical Society, which we super appreciate. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got to recognize the mistakes that we've made. How do we make better choices going forward? Right. And so uh, we're starting to get a little bit of positive love out of the Tulsa TV stations. And we have this Smithsonian coming in to highlight some more stuff. And right. we get people to come in and see our beautification, what the beautification's done, what the historical society is all about. So it's a huge opportunity. So if you're out there in Nowata land, Nowata County land, please spread the word, share this video, give some love, come back and support your historical society financially if you want to uh, uh, volunteer. volunteer. What are other ways that they can give back to the Historical Society? Well, the main thing is the volunteering. We always need docents, and it's really not hard, and it's very interesting because you get to meet people that you might not For somebody that's meet. not familiar with the word docents, because I wasn't originally. That's true. Docents <laughs> is... Me either. 
It's the people that actually sit at the at the museum and greet visitors and answer questions if there are any. So cool. It, it's it's cool. a really it's a fun job. You get to meet interesting people. Very cool. Trista, we're, we're at our 10-minute mark? Yep, a little after 10. Okay, I feel like we may have blown. I was just enjoying myself when I got to think, oh, crap, we may be at 15. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is this is a Know What I Can podcast. Know What I Can stands for Community Advancement Network. And sometimes people aren't truly aware of what Know What I Can is and does. And uh, that's okay because we're always trying to kind of reinvent ourselves too. But uh, we're a coalition of three grants. Tobacco cessation, uh, physical activity and nutrition is my grant, and Misty uh, Young's grant, uh, that is TSET. And then we have PFS and DFC, and uh, one of those is uh, Partnerships for Success, which is the drug and alcohol. And then uh, DFS is, what is DFS stand for? DFC, Drug Free Communities. Mm -hmm acronyms all day mm -hmm. and uh those are the ways we approach helping the community now one might ask themselves why are we promoting historical society whenever right. we have these like literal drug and alcohol opioid prevention grants because if people have things to do to occupy their time they have places to go and they have people to do things with right. then they have support and they have real community and if they're in community they may not feel the need to go and self-medicate or over self-medicate mm -hmm. uh you know a lot of times people don't realize a little moderation here and there is not the end of the world we're not the quote-unquote fun haters but go to the historical society you will be amazed that you could burn up 30 minutes to an hour if right. and if you're really interested you could spend there two or three hours or all day if you if you chose to right um but go be a part of something in the community. Be with uh, people that are like-minded and do something that you're passionate about and be a part of the community. And maybe you'd feel like you fit in and you don't feel like you need to uh, self-medicate or over-self-medicate. Right. So that's our little tie-in. I usually call that the wrap-up. <laughs> but um, we're getting really close to the end. And is there anything else that you can think of that might just be like, oh, crud. You know, I will kick myself <laughs> when I walk out the door if I forgot to say or bring up or promote this about the Historical Society. Um, well, I don't know if everybody is aware, but the Historical Society also has the uh, Glass Mansion. Oh, and right, we right. have So we have a historical residence as well, and we try to have that open to the public several times a year. Right now we've got a Christmas open house going on, and we'd love to have people come. I think I heard that we had a really good Sunday, so that seems to be a good Sunday afternoon yeah. activity. So just come see us. That's My Grandma Marilyn say. was... Uh, she was. Of the Glass Mansion Society. For, I served on it. Uh, a lot of you out there might have remember. A lot of us have, uh, as high schoolers, may have went and served uh, mm -hmm. for the Christmas stuff. Right. And then while we're talking about history things, uh, the uh, One Room Schoolhouse, Diamond yes. Point, Diamond out Point. southeast of town, south east, southwest of town. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, yeah, those are, we got a lot of history. There's a ton of other things we could talk about, but for time's sake, we'd love to have you come back on. <laughs> Any time. Well, thank you. I to, appreciate it. Uh, or anybody else from the Historical Society, for that matter. Because it's a really valuable... Whenever I say diamond in the rough, I really, really... And I'm not the only one that says that. It's not just me. But everybody like loves that and wishes more people knew about it. And I think this Smithsonian thing could be a huge opportunity. I think so, too. To, to show people what we have. Well, well, thank you very much, Marcus. You I are very it. welcome. We'll see you later. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.